Welcome home. This is the Residency Podcast. I am Jeff Tomasic with Drew Belcher and Low Raven. Yellow. Bringing you the biggest guests and stories in entertainment business, pop culture, and sports from our brand new studio on the Las Vegas Strip inside the Mandalay Bay. Make sure to subscribe on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. This episode is brought to you by Mandalay Bay. All is right in the world because football has finally started again. Yes. Do not forget that the Bud Light Beer Garden between Mandalay Bay and Luxor is the only place to enjoy the pregame and postgame for all the home Raiders games. Tons of food, music, big guest experiences, and we will be there all the time to hang out with you guys, so make sure to hit us up. By the way, big game tonight, so can't Huge. wait. Uh, if you need even more adrenaline, then this weekend, the weekend of September 25th, uh, has everything you could ever want in Las Vegas. NASCAR is back at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, plus UFC 266 is at T-Mobile Arena. You know the headquarters to enjoy the weekend properly. We'll be at Mandalay Bay, so make sure you come on by. And when you're on property, check out our studio in the sports book. Like, come say hi, bang on the glass, wave at us. You can yell at us if you want to. We're ready to rock. Don't bang on the glass. Yeah, yeah just don't. Break um, it. Huge episode today. Yes, we sir. Are, we are talking all things Vegas, all things hockey, all things sports with a great friend of ours, Vegas Golden Knights superstar, proud owner of one of the best heads of hair in the NHL. Woo. Alex Tuck is in the building. Yes, sir. What's going Welcome, on, man? man? How's it going? Thanks for having me, guys. You good? We are excited, man. We're pumped up. Yeah, oh, yeah. for sure. We're vibing right now. Um, we have a lot of questions for you, so we're going to dive into this head first. But a little background for everybody. Uh, let's take it back. Your first thought when you found out that you were actually moving to Las Vegas to join the Knights, what was that like? Super happy, super scared? Mix of emotions because I, I was with Minnesota. They drafted me. It was kind of sad that they traded me. Sure. And I, I, found, I found out on Twitter that I was coming to Vegas. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, Michael Russo was uh, is like the head beat writer for Minnesota Wild. Uh, I was like, yeah, talk most likely headed to Vegas. And I was as part of a deal because I was too young to get picked up in the expansion draft. So they're like, well, if you take Hall, we'll give you Tuck and you give us a third rounder. So that was kind of like the deal. They weren't able to officially tell me until like 11 a.m. So like, like this year, Seattle, like, most people knew who was getting drafted. But, like, when I th think back to Vegas, like, no one really knew. Yeah. Like, I, didn't e I wasn't even able to tell many, many people at all. Yeah. Just my immediate family and stuff. So we were able to sit there and watch it. But it was pretty mixed emotions. But then we were like, Vegas, baby. Vegas, yeah, baby, Vegas, yes. Baby. I mean, I was a 21-year-old kid. Oh, uh, shit. Going to Vegas, uh, I mean, it's pretty daunting. Yeah. But... I mean, it's Vegas. I was excited. Everyone wanted to come and visit. Immediately, people were like, I'm coming to visit. <laughs> yeah, for I'm sure. I'm coming to visit. You didn't get those texts in Minnesota? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one wants to go to Minnesota. Text. Minnesota's a beautiful city. Yeah. yeah. I gotta say, I, I really like Minnesota. Um, but yeah, it's, it's cold. It's, it's cold. cold. Really cold. I mean, like, but I'd only lived, like, in cold atmospheres. Syracuse, New York. Snowy is sitting in the country. Yep. Boston. They had two of their biggest years of snow in like the past 50 years when I was there. Um, I, and two, prior to that, Michigan, I, I played in the U.S. team. We had two polar vortexes there. Yeah. <laughs> and then I go to <laughs> Iowa and Minnesota where it's like minus 40 on a good day. And then uh, I come to Vegas. Where it's 140 every day. Right? Yeah, way yeah. different. It's two weeks way of beautifulness. Different. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's crazy. But um, no, it was awesome. I mean, You're I, I, was, I was pumped. And I, I mean... But it was on Twitter before you knew? Like 8 o'clock well, yeah, before no, they tell you like My agent didn't know. I didn't know. No one, I mean, the only people that knew were I Vegas like the decision and, makers. Like, hi, cool. I could call Tuck right now and let him know. Or I could fire this tweet it's out. going to leak it on Twitter. So <laughs> yeah. finding out on Twitter is oh, real. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's their job. Yeah. I mean, they want to be the first to report. Yeah. So, like, it was still kind of like a rumor. And then 11 a.m., I got the call from um, now the Philadelphia GM um, there. And he was like, yeah, we, sorry to say, like, uh, we traded you. <laughs> no, I mean it was like it, yeah. it was it was a really good conversation, and I understood the position they were in. They were they yeah. were trying to protect a lot of really good players, and they had an older core. And um, I had had my I played six games for Minnesota Wild, and kind of I, I guess I didn't. They they thought that they could get away with uh, with keeping what who they wanted to keep and getting rid of myself and Eric Call, and uh, I don't know if it was a. I like to think it was a bad decision, personally. I, I, you yeah, know, I like for sure. Yeah, I would yeah, say yeah, so, course, absolutely. Course. I mean, even Hala, I mean, he was fourth line center in mini. Like, we played on a line together for a few games and stuff, and um, they 
got, like he got picked up in the expansion draft, had 29 goals that year. Killed it. Uh, yeah. I mean, killed it. Like so, like they were kind of sitting there like, oops, shit. Well, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. It kind of sucks, but. I mean, as far as surprise tweets go, it's not bad if you're 21 year old. Hey, FYI, I'm moving to Vegas. It could have been a lot of other random for cities. Sure, for That's sure. That's a big W. Have you ever been to Vegas before that moment? No. Well, oh. yes, no. I was four years old, so no. Okay. So no, hey, doesn't no count. Yeah, doesn't count. Trip. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just turned 21 like 21. a month prior. Damn. There's no reason. Not to a lot of reason Vegas. to come out oh, before. Before 21. No. 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 no reason at all. How was year one? Awesome. Yeah. You Legendary. Can, can you imagine? Legendary. Yeah, it has to be. It's like. Like, whatever you expect, I mean, multiply it. Like yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. Like, like, it's like, oh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun and stuff. But the way we were treated was, like, unbelievable. Yeah. Of course. Like, Royalty. everyone. Yeah. Royalty. Well, I mean, I don't, I, 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 we were surprised. Cause it's like Vegas, like hockey. How are they going to do? Yeah. Sure. Everywhere we went. I mean, there's Vegas everywhere. I mean, it's grown even more. Yeah. Like, you can get away with going on the strip and not being recognized. But you go to downtown Summerlin now, and you got to, like, Try to like sneak in, like, right. like do masks shit. Yeah, help. Yeah, a mask. Yeah, help. Yeah, yeah, for help. Sure. help. But now people are like, oh yeah, I recognize the eyes. I'm like, you're good. Like, I you're, good. Good. you're good. You're good. Like, holy crap. But like, it's like, is that why you change the facial hair all the time? Is that why you switch uh, yeah. it up? Yeah. Oh, I, I like keeping the beard, but but uh, mustache tuck no, was good. Oh, that was miserable. My girlfriend hated that. <laughs> yeah. are you kidding me? That the, the continuous mustache I've got, the oh, Fu Manchu. The Fu Manchu was great. Manchu. Oh, I yeah. yeah November's fun though. November's fun. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Must have. How to do it that way? I well, mean, yeah. I mean, by the way, people underestimate a city's desire for a professional sports team, and that was the first one Vegas ever had. So for it sure. was like this immediate gratitude towards it that no one expected, right? I think yeah. even you had been skeptical in the very beginning. Like Vegas hockey, is this gonna actually like? I I really think that it's sunk in. Um, I was playing. We were playing against the Blues and. Um, one of my best friends, Zach Sanford, was one of his first years in the NHL. And we lined up next to each other. And he looks at me and he goes, are you fucking kidding me? And I go, dude, I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> House is rocking. Well, it, it was just like, and sorry for the language, but I was, it was like, holy crap. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It was sold out, packed, loudest building in the arena every single night. Didn't matter who was in town. I mean, sometimes we get a lot of opposing fans. Yep. Because yeah. they would, a lot of Canadian teams, especially yeah, like yeah. Montreal, they would spend the big bucks to come in. Of course. And like, I mean, some of the Vegas fans were like, I, I gotta make a little bit of my money back. Yeah. They, yeah. They're not cheap tickets. Yeah. yeah. So I, we were like understanding, but it didn't matter. No, no opposing team was gonna outshine our fans. No, for sure. I mean, when they started yelling night during the national anthem, it was chills the yeah. entire time. That, must be that, so that tradition is incredible. Unbelievable. That was, so that's our next question, playing in T-Mobile Arena. That, what's it like? So we had Brandon Marshall on, this, on the show earlier. He talked about what it was like to walk out for the Super Bowl. We had Charlotte Flair uh, and to talk about what it was like to walk out on those huge WWE stadium mm -hmm. events. T-Mobile Arena has probably the best entrance yeah. for the Knights and the best overall stadium atmosphere in the NHL. What's it like actually playing in it? So you got to help me with his name, but imagine game one of 2018 of the Stanley Cup Finals, skating in to a packed arena, going through the National Anthem, hearing night being yelled by 18.5 thousand fans, and then having, uh, who was it, the, the boxing... Um, Michael oh, Buffer. Buffer. Oh, Buffer. Bruce yeah. Buffer. Bruce Buffer, Bruce Buffer, Bruce Buffer yeah. yeah. Oh. Announcing the starting lineup. And you're like... I'm getting chills like right what now. What the hell is going on How right did I now? end up here? Like... I'm, I'm a 21 year old kid. Oh, I, I just turned 22 at the time, but I was the youngest guy on the team. And I'm just like, this is my first full year in the NHL. I'm standing on the bench, like, this what? is insane. <laughs> Go to the Stanley the Cup. Every other yeah. 22 year old is slamming natty lights in a frat house yeah. across the US. Yeah. And I'm making good money to play the sport that I love to live in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's a, that's like, a, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> Could my life be any luckier? Yeah, as far as a wish list goes. Yeah. With That's Bruce Buffers saying your name, like, let's get ready to rumble? Are you kidding to me? To a packed house? Yeah. Oh, my he God. Said, yeah, and he said, let's get ready to rumble, too. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> it's on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and we won the first game. We were like. Hyped. We ended up losing the next four, which we'll <laughs> 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 We won't talk about that, oh, but yeah. we won the first one, and we were like, we got three games. We could win the Stanley Cup. Yep. Like, holy crap. The but atmosphere, uh, like, normally during T-Mobile versus the Stanley Cup, was it drastically different, even bigger than it normally is for you guys? 
I, I don't even know if we had the legal amount allowed in that arena. Yeah, right. Like yeah. we, I think people were like, everyone wanted tickets. Hanging like, from the rafters. Tickets were thousands of dollars. Yeah, each, for sure. Like for nosebleeds. Yeah. Everyone wanted to be a part of it, and it was insane. It was insanity. I think like that feeling must actually make him the Stanley Cup as a professional athlete. Like, all right, cool, am I ever going to get there? I hope so. You know, there's so many different variables that happen. When you guys finally got there, it was just like, holy shit. I yeah, mean, think about it. You've been, doing that, you've been thinking about it since you were a kid, right? Yeah. This, is what, this is what those years, whatever, 10, 15, 20 plus years of practice Work, yeah. is for. Since I was three years old. Exactly, exactly. Not to mention, I think it's the hardest trophy to win in all of sports. Now, imagine, so with COVID, going into the bubble, no fans. Right. No extra emotions. No home fans to try to get you pumped up. To get which is one going. of our biggest assets. Which is one of our biggest yeah. assets. But, I mean, like, that's why I gave kudos. I mean, not only the Tampa winning this year, but last year in the bubble, which I thought would probably go down as one of the hardest Stanley Cups to ever win because they didn't have 16 teams. We had, we had uh, 20 teams. Yep. Yeah. That's crazy. In the bubble. Or... I don't know, 24, or whatever it was. I can't remember now. Yeah. It's been a while, but we had a lot of teams. I mean, there was guys. I mean, you were going in, and the Montreal Canadiens were the last team in, and they, were, they beat Pittsburgh. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens when you have one of the best goalies in the world come in, and they beat him. You can play seven games. There's a good chance he's going to win four of them. Sure. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's playing. I mean, that's what happens sometimes. It's such, a, it's such an even field that, like, I mean – it's it just the raw sport now, right? There's no other emotions. There's no other outside factors. It's mano y mano. But there's yeah. no yeah. super teams. It's not like yeah. these teams that are above and beyond. I mean, like, I'd say the NFL is quite similar because it's, it's one and done each round for them. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I've taken, like, I, 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 like the, I, I like the NFL playoffs so much that it's like. You show up today or are you going home? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, was Tampa Bay and Kansas City probably the two best teams most likely, but yeah. there's a couple other really, really good teams. For sure. And even if, I mean, even the teams that were, like, last to come in, they put up a fight. It wasn't, like, blowouts. Sure. Of course. I mean, that's what, that's what it is. I mean, even when it's a sweep in the NHL playoffs, it's not like you're winning 6 nothing every game. I mean, yeah. there's, like, there's, like, multiple overtime victories sometimes. You could win four overtime games, and that could be the way you win. I mean, that, that's a game of inches. The yeah. margin of error is so small. Yeah. For sure. How was the bubble? Was that just super weird? It was. I played a lot of video games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to keep yourself occupied. I almost started streaming. Like, we were big into Warzone. Should have. Oh, of course. should have streamed. I've always wanted to do it for, like, and connect it to my foundation. Oh, that'd be right. So, like. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would, that, that would be. But I don't know, I'm getting a little older. I'm kind of stepping away. I mean, right now I'm playing again tomorrow because I'm injured. And I'm just, I can't skate. I can't play golf. So Verdansk like, streaming sounds perfect, by the way. <laughs> I've actually been playing more Apex. Apex, I, I love know. Apex. I just been mixing it up because there's a lot of cheaters right now in Warzone. So For I'm sure. trying to like. For sure. Guys, Alex Tuck streaming YouTube channel yeah, is coming Twitch, next Twitch week. Is coming. It's coming Twitch in is hot. Coming. Get ready for it. I don't know. I don't uh, know. Get ready for it. The fancy gaming setup is coming into the new house. Let's go. <laughs> we have three monitors. Oh, let's go. <laughs> I do have two monitors. Yeah, for yeah, sure. See? Exactly. I love it. No, You're already no, prepped for it. I got too much. I got, I got a college class now that I'm taking. So college for something specific. Uh, yeah, so I have a communications degree with a minor in marketing that I'm going towards. Okay. I'm 12 classes away from graduating. Okay. Because uh, I did two years at Boston College, and I was actually a little advanced, took some summer classes. I'm taking digital marketing strategy right now. Oh, it's right. I like so it. It's a level 200 course, so it's not like anything too crazy. It's not like a graduate program or sure. anything. But it's still, I mean, it's, it's schoolwork every week. There's no Zoom classes. It's kind of like do the work on its own, but several pages of reading, several videos, you have to do analysis to other people's work after they're like they're done. So I mean, it's it's challenging, but I did get a hundred percent on my first assignment. Oh, let's go! Let's go! Okay. He's a bad guy. Nanny okay. yes. man of many talents. It wasn't the one of the intro either. It was an actual assignment. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's back at Boston College. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Does so. your professor know that it's you, Alex Tuck? <laughs> I don't even, I, I don't know. I, I, we have to do an intro and stuff. So I was like, yeah, I live in Vegas and like I have a girlfriend and a dog and I play professional hockey for the nights. And so like I haven't taken a class in five years. So I hope everyone bears with me as I'm trying to ease my way back in. But 
I don't know. Maybe that she's a hockey fan. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe I she'll maybe harder Jersey if she's not a Knights fan, right? Maybe she's like this fuck. Oh, she's Bruins a Bruins fan, fan yeah, hands yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, Come for on. sure. Oh, oh, fuck I hate this guy. Them. Why am I getting 67s on all of my tests? <laughs> yeah. This sucks. Oh, no. By the way, you said that you're getting older. You're making us all feel like shit if you think that you're getting older, by the way. so it's my fifth year here, though, which is crazy. Yeah. It's Damn. my fifth year as a Vegas Knight. But your deal was seven years, right? Your original contract? Well, no. So my original was a three-year deal, entry-level contract. Yeah. I signed a seven-year deal after my first year in Vegas, but it didn't kick in until my third year in Vegas. So I have... Including this year, five years left of my deal. Oh, shit. not going anywhere, everybody. Yes, I love it. Knock on wood. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, yeah you never know. Yeah. Well, if if it does Part happen, we'll game. break it on Twitter. <laughs> Eight o'clock <laughs> before the lemonade and deadline. Live <laughs> tweet or anything. Um, speaking of exclusive news, so on the rumor mill, even though you are recovering from an injury right now, there are some rumors going around about Alex Tuck and the Olympic team. Any news about that? Would you join the Olympic team, the NHL Olympic team? I would love to be on the Olympic yeah. team. That would be so I sick. I don't know much about it. I, I haven't seen that. I, there, so that on, rumor is false, folks. <laughs> it's yeah. on the internet. No, it's, it's on the internet. It has to be true. I wouldn't yeah. say anything even if it was. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, it's, there's a, I, I heard there's a, a big list and stuff. There's nothing that I, I can talk yeah. about right now. Everything that I've heard is very preliminary. And we, we just came into an agreement with the league. That you guys you know, could go play. Well, yeah, there was like uh, with and with the Olympic committee and stuff like that. All the rules just got ironed out. So because the season break, right? It'll be a break in the season. Um, yeah, yeah. So there, yeah. I mean, that's that's happening. It's like a three week season break. Yeah. Um, which is a little bit stressful with COVID still sure moving around. But um, I mean, it's it's kind of cool though because like yeah. this, the past Olympics just happened. They had baseball. Yeah, but no major league baseball players could play. It was so all the AAA guys. It all, yeah, it was, AAA it was all minor league players. Well, that's what I mean. At least we can go represent hockey, our country with NHL hockey, players. Yeah, but NHL wasn't last time. We yeah, didn't ha- we didn't do it last time. We had a bunch of collegiate athletes go. Yeah. Got so um, and minor league and European guys. Or, or, so it was. Um, it was kind of uh, kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah. But sure. um, I mean, if I'm if I'm asked to go, I'm going. Hundred percent. I don't care yeah. where it is. Give me an Antarctica. I'm going. I love that. I represent my country. I've done it before. I played on the U.S. national team for two years in junior, senior, high school. I did a World Juniors once, which is under 20. So I've done a couple, few tournaments. I got a gold medal in the U18 World Championship. Hey. Let's go. Something to take great pride in. So it's good. That's, That's right. amazing. Have they allowed uh, NHL players previously to be yeah. in the Olympics? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure yeah. Okay. Like, uh, yeah, some, I know some guys that have gone and stuff. Yeah. And That's sick. You don't yeah. remember, like, yeah, Patrick Kane was there. Ryan Miller was the goal of USA, but... Canada ended up being some finals. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Huge rivalry. As long yeah. as we can beat Canada and or that's Russia, that. that's all that fucking matters. Yeah, that's all that matters. Well, no, 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 no. Sweden, family. I mean, there's like Czechs. Uh, there's, it's, it's really diversifying. It really is. I mean, like if you look back like 10 years ago, I mean, you probably say that Canada had like 70% of the players in the NHL. Sure. And I think it's below 50 now. I think the Knights, too, has a ton of Canadian players, right? Yeah, well, half our team's from Winnipeg. Exactly. <laughs> Kelly McCrimmon, we all understand he's well, he's a Winnipeg guy. Sure, so. sure. No, uh, it's 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 been a lot of really good players. I mean, yeah, Mark Stone, you got uh, Zach Whitecloth from Brandon, Manitoba. So I guess it's Manitoba based, but uh, we got two new guys, Howden and Patrick, Keegan Colasar. Obviously, we lost Ryan Reeves, but we've had guys in the past, Cody Eakin. Um, there's a couple other guys. I mean, it's. It's a it, long list. It would be interesting, actually, to have teammates play for two different teams on the on the Olympics. Like, yeah. what that would be like coming back. It'd probably be pretty fun for you guys. To be honest. Well, there's gonna be we'll have it. Yeah. Several guys, and I'd say Canada, Sweden. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, who else we have that's on different. Uh, Dadunov could be Russia. Um, that's crazy. Like, two week break in the middle no, of the season. Like, all right, we're going to go be against each other and then yeah. come back. Yeah, and come back. And finish That's this cool, up. though. Potential Americans. And- Guys, we're starting the campaign for Tuck on the U.S. Olympic team <laughs> yeah, right now. Sure. So let's go. Sure. Let's go. Tweet yeah. it out. Send it to whatever committee yeah, you thanks. have to. Yeah, I don't know if that's how it works. But that's how it yeah. definitely works. Of course, of course. We're ready. Fan vote. Yeah, Influence. Yeah, fan vote. Influence. Yeah. Last time there was a fan vote, John Scott. No offense to John Scott. It was awesome. I love that it, they did that, but they voted him in the All Star game as captain. It was awesome. But. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if they did that for like the Olympics? For the Olympics? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, had look, that like NFL player that wanted to go try hockey, like had him go yeah. to the Olympics. Like, that'd <laughs> yeah. be ridiculous. Yeah. But, no, I'm just kidding. But um, if yeah. you tried football, by the way, if you went to the NFL, what position would you play? Tight end. 
tight end. end. Absolutely. Come on, six four. Absolutely. Yeah, six four. I could probably I could probably hold about two forty five, two fifty as a weight if I played tight end. I would have yeah. probably worked out a lot more. <laughs> yeah, hockey, yeah. You don't really need a big upper body. You want to keep it as lean as possible to yeah. so skate faster. Yeah. Most guys. Sure, sure. Most guys, yeah, yeah. Hitting in football versus hitting in hockey, what do you think the, big, the biggest differences are? Keeping well, your balance. Apparently, there's, there's 20, 20% harder hits in hockey than there is in football. But you have more equipment. Yeah. And yeah. it's harder to be hit in hockey than it is football. It's not constant, constant, constant. Yeah. I mean, you're bumping and stuff like that. And... Um, but you're also flying around on skates. That's too, what I mean. Right? So that's why the impact is bigger is because yeah. you're moving at such high speeds. For sure. But I mean, like, I've seen some football hits. <laughs> but then again, like, I've, I've like, even, even, not even hitting people, but, like, going into the boards. Like, I broke my hand going into the boards a few years Damn. ago. Yeah, you're literally hitting a wall. And pucks yeah. flying around at 100 miles an hour, sticks, yeah, yeah, skates, yeah. all that. But I mean, you got, you got some. 400 pound linebackers, like, oh. <laughs> you getting imagine smoked. running up the middle? I mean, getting like, smoked. crushed. See, um, or getting smoked oh, by Aaron Donald, uh, like, watching that game last yeah. night. What was that? Who was that? Aaron, Aaron Donald, Donald was just watching, watching him play last night for the Rams. Just like, could you, you imagine going against, against that guy? Did you see, um, who's Miles Garrett? Is that who yeah. it is? Oh, Arm my Brown? God, he's a beast. Oh, Miles Garrett. Dude. Oh, my oh. God, that's a joke. You know who one of my favorite guys is? Um, Bosa. The Bosa. Yeah, brothers. the Bosa. Yeah, Bosa. Those guys are beasts. Yeah, They're absolute monsters. But, but. I, I, I gotta say, I just picked up a uh, Max Crosby jersey last night. Okay, all right. So, Mad Max. So I'm, Max, I'm let's go. Going yeah, out, yeah, he's going yeah. after it tonight. Let's go. Yeah, hey, well, I want a jersey swap, 98 for 89. Ooh, we're doing, we're doing it live at Mandalay Bay. We're doing a live jersey swap here. Key in on that. By the way, the, I mean, tight end could work. Let's, let's, uh, it could work. let's get a little Vegas. Darren Waller. Yeah, Darren Waller. <laughs> sorry, Darren. Yeah. Coming for your spot, sorry, man. Sorry, Darren, yeah, we okay. out. Top five. <laughs> I don't he think is, I'm really he come is. As like a fan who can't skate, by the three. way, at all, watching hockey to me some, just blows my mind every For single sure. time. I because I can't move. Like at least there's something about you when you watch football. There's like this half percent. You're like, I mean, maybe I could probably I go out there and run around. Yeah, I would have caught yeah. that. Yeah. I could do that. I watch hockey. I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? Like, How? I watch that, that movie like My Next with a Kid That Can't Stop. That's me for sure. You're just flying and then Nothing. just can't stop. Uh, run to the wall. I need lessons. Yeah. I need sure. that immediately. Um, in the NHL, what t- who's the team that you hate to play against that always gives you guys the most problems? Well, I mean, us and the Sharks. Sharks? Yeah. I mean, we, we beat them every game last year. Yeah, which absolutely. Great. Which feels yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh, does it ever. But, I mean, there's that rivalry. I've, they had a tough year last year. They're going through a little bit of a, a rough patch. and I mean, but they have, they have a good... They have a good GM, and I'm sure they'll figure it out. They're just in a little bit of a rough patch, and I'm sure the rivalry will pick right back up where it left off. So, but it's, I mean, it's heated. It's 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 hit or get hit. It's battles all the time. But it's like going into that game, you guys are all amped up yeah, every, every time. Every game, that's awesome. Game. Or we want to beat them every time. It's also a super physical game. We had, I mean, we had seven wins again. We wanted to beat them the last game. Good. We, screw that. We're, we're, we're winning this game. We're, eight eight games. Boom. We wanted it. Is there any shit talking on the ice? I don't do it. I no. don't do any of it. No, I'm terrible. So I just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm terrible. I, I don't say anything. I just like, I don't say anything. <laughs> so no. re, do you try it for it a little like, while and then just quit? I leave like, to other guys. Like there's other guys that are good. Like Revo was really good. Marshy just runs his mouth. So it ends up working because he just says whatever comes to his mind. <laughs> and it's just constantly. Um, I don't know. There's probably some other guys that are pretty witty, but I'm not really witty. So you're I you're just, that silent assassin. Well, not really sad. I just try to play hard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if I have to, like, I'd fight. But like, we we have. I mean, it's it's kind of easing itself out of the game. But like, you stand up for your teammates. Yeah. But it's not like you're just lining up in the middle. Proactively going. Yeah. Going I after. I mean, them. there's guys that still like occasionally that still do it. Like Revo when he had to did it and stuff. But we're gonna miss him. But we got like. King Polisar, he'll throw him. Yeah. Nick Haig, he'll throw him. Those are a couple big boys. Big ass yeah, dudes. Yeah. 225, 230, 235. On skates, too? On no. Skates yeah. too. Hard pass. Six, Absolutely six, pass. He, I mean, he went toe to toe with uh, Felino there for a minute. Yeah. That guy's a tough customer. Tough, tough guy. That's right. Really nice guy. Like, I met him off the ice. He's a really nice guy. But, like, when it comes down to it, like, he protects his teammates. He fights, he's a heavy. Not, like the heavies are different nowadays. They score goals, and they're Tom Wilson's a heavy, and, and yeah, for and sure, stuff like that. I mean, but yeah. What's it like for you guys since you talked about when you left 
Minnesota came here. When you figure out that Reeves is leaving and you figure out that Flurry is leaving, like, what is that like in the locker room for you guys? I mean, you lose a, some really good characters. Yeah. You really do. I mean, I don't think there's a, a, team, a teammate like Marc-Andre Fleury. I don't think there ever will be. He is the best teammate. I don't care. You lost anyone. Marc-Andre Fleury is their best teammate of all time. Really? Unbelievable guy. That's I awesome. mean, like, yeah, doesn't matter. Like, he'll do anything for anybody, and like, leads by example, works his ass off every practice. It's just like everything he does is the most professional way possible, and he has fun doing it. And he's light, and I- I've never met a person that doesn't like him. That's rad. It's like really a pro's weird. pro. That's so cool. Pro's pro, yeah. And Revo's great. Revo's got a little bit edgier at times and stuff like that. Yeah, but he's he's a great teammate too. Same with Nick Holden. I mean, he was just like, it was rough for him this year because he was like, not only in and out of the lineup, but he was on the taxi squad for a lot of the year. And like, he's an older guy, he's a veteran and stuff, and he's a great player. It was just hard with like the cap room and everything like that. And he's such a great guy and he's a leader on our team. And he, he, he came to work and he worked every day, even though even sometimes when he wasn't skating with our team, like he came in and he knew he wasn't playing, he's still working. So. We're going to miss those guys a lot. And it was guys that I was able to look up to as younger guys. So, But now we're, we're kind of filling in some younger guys. We got Nolan Patrick and Brett Howden, who are great guys. I mean, we added Dad and Off, who's a veteran in the league, yeah, uh, which is good. But there's going to be some guys that need to step up character-wise, and we need to really have this team come together. But we still have a good core group. I've always thought That's that was right. probably the toughest part about being the professional athlete is the in and out of the such a close-knit. Because the NHL team is not big. No, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, you guys do not have a huge team, so the in and out of, like, key components or players or friends, right? Yeah. That's got to be kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, we have <laughs> – it's also, like, I mean, not only do we know each other, but we know their family. We know yeah. the yeah, wives very are, true. or friends. Like, they do everything. They watch games together. They, they go to dinners together and stuff. The kids play together. Whoever has kids on the team, like, we have a well, – usually without COVID, we have, like, a family room, and all the kids play together during the game, especially – there's even some, like, babysitters and nannies there that would, like, watch your kids during the game and stuff. So it was, I mean, it's, it's a, we had a really, we still do have a really tight-knit group and stuff, but it's really sad to see, like, even the kids go and stuff like that because, like, you watch them grow up. Like, I mean, I've known all their kids since, like, I was yeah. for, like, four years now, three years now and stuff, and I, I watched the ki- their kids grow. And so I, see, I like to say about the kids is, like, kind of sad too. No, Dang. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of tough. But, I mean, look, building that Stanley Cup, we're back this year. We need it. We need it in Vegas. Do you imagine sure. if, Could you imagine the celebration in Vegas if a cup does come? When a cup does come? The Simpsons have predicted it. You saw I'm telling that. you, it's going to be crazy. That. I saw it's it, yeah. Vegas. Do you love the, the cup? How, isn't that always the weirdest here, thing, the Simpsons thing? I know thing. Washington won it while they were here, but I still don't think that counts. I, I still think we need to, admit to, to win it to make that Simpsons position come For through. For sure. Absolutely, 100%. Parades on the strip, parades in the Bro. local market, oh Summerlin, East Side. It's going to go absolutely apeshit. Unreal. Can we, can we bring the, when it does happen, can we bring the cup to the podcast, please? <laughs> sure. Let's go. Of course, of course. Let's go. I just I'll want. bring it everywhere. Let's go. Yeah. bring it everywhere. Because <laughs> <Everywhere. laughs> don't the guys get like an X amount of time each with the cup? I, I don't know. I think so. Yeah, well, like you bring it home for, like you get your day with the cup at sure. home. But, like, it'll be here for, like, two, three weeks. I, I don't know where it won't be. Yeah, oh, it's exactly. going to the strip clubs. It's going everywhere. It's going to have its own wow, from, like, Summerlin all the way to I'm Henderson. Not gonna say, I, yeah, I'll, it'll, it'll ride out. It'll ride through this trip for sure. For sure. Um, we'll have fun with it. It will be. I but like I, that. I mean, want, it, it's like when you do it, like, like, Tampa does it really cool. They do the boat parade and stuff like yeah. that. So I'm sure Vegas will do something. Insane. It'll be, it'll be something insane. Insane. I mean, shutting down. Like, could you imagine like shutting down a strip? Oh, yeah. It'll have to happen. Absolutely. That's definitely I mean, on the agenda. Yeah. I mean, that's 100%. crazy. You think they would do that? They would shut down the strip Hell for parade? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Or, or they do it one off the strip side. somewhere. No, they would do. They would. You think they would shut down one side or both sides? Both sides. I think both. They sides. would have to. The whole thing. You'd it's just like New Year's for a day. Like you New have New to. Yes. Yeah. Just like New Year's. It's just like good example, though. For okay, sure. You can do that. They'd yeah. parade it from like T Mobile all the way. Okay, up. well, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's yeah, yeah, we for gotta sure. win it first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slowly. We're making plans already. Slowly but surely. Um, talking about the locker room earlier with the other players, what is the funniest locker room story that you guys have with the Knights? There has to be something. 
So, I, I mean, I can't, I can't tell, like, because there's some stuff that obviously, what's, what happens in the locker room stays in the locker room. <laughs> Absolutely, hundred percent. We don't 100%. get to see it. We're Absolutely. trying to get some inside oh, info. I didn't even, oh, I didn't even think about any stories like that. Oh, damn. I have to, you have to come back to me on that. I'll, I'll think, I'll think while we're doing this. I'll think. All right, we'll come All right, back. You think you get a funny locker room story for me? I, I, yeah, I could probably figure something out. I'm not a good storyteller, but I'll figure something out. <laughs> There's someone there for sure. Uh, so the NHL is like a legitimate family affair for you now. Your little brother got drafted. Wow. Are you taking at least 50% credit for that? <laughs> for, for bringing him up through the ranks? I can't take that much credit for my parents. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, from your parents. There you, there you go. go. That's the answer. And him? No, yeah. I, I'll take like 2%. All right, perfect. Oh, nice. There you go. I'll, I'll, I'll sprinkle. No, I mean, I think it helps. I think that... Um, I wish I had like an older brother that played in the NHL. Sure. They'd like show me a little bit. So I think I think he was able to mature a little bit faster than I was. Like, yeah. Not only like as a player, but like off the ice in the locker room and stuff like that. Because like he had a little bit more experience he had a little than I did. Like coming into my locker room and seeing how we like seeing how I went about my day day by day. It's a little so bit of a blueprint, to, right? Like yeah, kind yeah, of follow and to adjust himself. That pro hockey a little bit earlier than I was per se so I guess when I first came to Vegas he was 15 so crazy I mean, that's, yeah and he was able to come in and he met some of the guys and stuff but like in the summertime he saw how hard I worked to get to where I am today so now he's able to to really bear down and do that so I mean it's, it's really cool and I was really proud of him when he got drafted and um, I mean sky's the limit I, I really do believe so, and I don't think he's anywhere near where his potential could be. So it's really fun to see how much he's progressed throughout the years. And I'm really excited because, like, this is the first summer where, like, I wasn't able to really train with him. I guess last summer a little bit, too, with COVID, and I was in the bubble and stuff like that. But, like, um, but even, even COVID was weird for him. Yeah, yeah. And so it was, like, an off year for him. But, like, this year was, like, I was only home for a week. Because I had shoulder surgery and stuff, so I had to come back here. I was only home for a week. Playoffs ran later, and he was home. He was getting after it the whole summer. That's red. And we were talking about it, and he was like, he was skating a lot. He was going with my old skating coach, and it was good. I mean, he had a good summer. He looks good. He looks lean. He looks fit. He looks like he's. I, I think he's gonna have a really good year. At, we were talking about it before you got here. Probably the coolest scenario of two brothers yeah. is both being professional athletes. It's so like, rad. That's got to be like, was that the goal since you guys were kids? Oh, yeah. 100%. Hey, we're both sure. going to the league. 100%. We, we had a big age difference. Six years is a big age difference. That it is. is a big gap. It is. So, and he's a twin. So my twin sister, or so his, his twin sister, my sister, Leah, um, we're six years apart. So it's the three of us. She played sports. Um, she was a really good athlete. She just didn't really have, I guess, like, she didn't like it as much as we did. Like, she didn't find, like, she loved to skate. She didn't play hockey, though. She played field hockey. She played lacrosse. Um, she was really good. Yeah. She just, I don't know. She didn't want to practice. She just liked playing the games and playing, having fun. And she's in school now. And um, she's always been a huge supporter of us. And uh, she sacrificed a lot, too just like my parents did. So she, she had to come on road trips and to go to the games on the weekends. And Growing up hockey, so I've heard it's like so early as well, like the practice and the games, everything when you're like growing up doing it. So the break of dawn. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I used to wake up at, my dad used to make, wake me up one, one day a week at five in the morning to go and do a 30 minute skating and shooting lesson. And this was before most people were doing it, only the crazy people were sure, doing sure. it. Sure, yeah, sure, seriously. <laughs> My dad had the key to the local rink. The rink wasn't even open yet. My dad would have this, like, little – it was, like, a top latch. We knew the manager. We had my skating coach. My dad would pay, like, 20, 20 bucks, 30 minutes, and I'd go and skate and work on my shooting. So that was uh, something that he always thought that was really important. And so I had a shooting coach, Donnie Kernan Jr., who was a really, really good guy. And Sick. Worked, I was seven, six years old when I started working with him. So I was, like, 12, yeah. 13, 14. So we did that like once a week for years, years. That's, That's got to feel amazing for your parents too to feel so accomplished to have two sons now going to be playing. It's crazy because growing up playing no, hockey, he still got it. No, no, I don't want. I don't want my brother to get a big head and get ahead of himself. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it's it's not. This next step is this next two steps to turn pro and not only to turn pro but to but to, to make it in the, the NHL team, yeah. is sure some of the hardest years of your life. It really is, right? It really is. The AHL is 
is a grind. It doesn't matter how well you do it in college hockey. There are guys that still ha- don't know how to make jump from college hockey to not only the NHL, but to AHL. They struggle. People struggle still. Sure. And then to go from the AHL to the NHL is another huge jump. What, what do you think the, the biggest jump is right there? So a lot of like football players say, like, or even basketball players say, like pace of play, right? Is it the pace of play? Is it the physicality? Is it just pure speed? Thinking the game. Thinking through it, okay. It's pace of play. Not like it's not like your conditioning or not like your speed because there are guys in the AHL that are faster than half the guys on Vegas or even me or anybody, but it's the ability to to play in a, play in systems. It's the ability to think ahead of know what's going to happen and know the game. Yeah, some guys get in on talent alone and don't think the game as much. Yeah, but if you're able to think the game, you can you can. Kind of, li- you don't have to be the best skater. Yep. You don't have to have the best shot. So it's kind of like you have to find, and it's also opportunity. For sure. I had a really, I got very lucky. Like Minnesota was a hard team to break into. They had a lot of veterans. They had a lot of guys sign on long term deals. It would have been a very hard team to break into. Getting traded to Vegas, it was clean slate. Yeah. Yeah. Clean slate. That's interesting, actually. It was yeah. a flux of, we didn't know how good the team was going to be. I got sent down. The fr- I missed the first four games of the season, my first year. That was because I was on an entry-level contract. But they told me I made the team. I had a really good camp. They're like, Alex, you made the team. Same with Shea Theodore. You guys made the team, but we got to send you down. Then a couple injuries happened. I came back up, and I stayed. So it's also making the most of your opportunity. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah, and staying there. Yeah, staying there. You know there. what I'm saying? Like, that's really quick. You forget how quickly people forget how good you were. It's like, hey, yeah. this this season now, this time now, right? You got to you Making the most of that opportunity. Over and over again. That's why you keep working out those legs. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It was a hard one today. <laughs> <laughs> the bike. Um, if there was a celebrity hockey game and you were the coach, who would be your top picks? Wait, wait, for like celebrities that don't play hockey? Yeah, there's like a celebrity oh, hockey oh, game. Oh. Who be, and, oh, you're, that, and you were the coach. play hockey. Oh, that play, I mean like, I mean like Wayne Gretzky, like he's a celebrity. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> not a that's fair actual answer. hockey player. That's a celebrity though. <laughs> yeah. He's the greatest player ever. I he's mean, the GOAT. You're that's saying like non-hockey? Yeah, non-hockey. Yeah, non-hockey. Yeah. Are there any like crazy notable non-hockey celebrities that like play hockey? Oh, um, okay, Tim Riggins, Friday Night Lights. Like actual Tim Riggins? Like, he no, the no, actor. I mean, yeah, the actor, yeah. yeah. Yeah, what's his, um, I can never remember his name. By the way, a huge Friday Night Lights fan. Oh, yeah, I love that. I, I watched that a couple times. Um, yeah, he's, a, like, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of Canadian, like, you got to look for the Canadian actors, honestly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, <laughs> they all play, grow yeah, up, they all yeah. Grow yeah. Up. Who is the other one? Taylor um, Kitsch, by the way, is Tim Higgins. Taylor thank Kitsch. You, thank you, Taylor Kitsch. Um, and then you had... Um, Gotta get the Canadian celebrity. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Blake Lively is, is married to... Bieber. Bieber's sick at, at oh, hockey. Oh, Justin Bieber. Yeah, obviously you're going to have him. He's got some nice hands. Yeah, Bieber's yeah. got some nice hands. Bieber's, Bieber's solid yeah, in hockey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Get the Biebs on there. But who's uh, who's Blake Lively married to? Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. They're Canadian. Also Canadian. Oh, my gosh. Oh, we're just picking well, Canadians no. they're, from, they're from my girlfriend's hometown. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, they're from, oh, they live... Uh, they, they are... One of their parents lives there in yeah. White Rock. Or, yeah, Surrey, British Columbia. So that's where my girlfriend Kai is from. So. Stacked team. So he's he start, I'm, start, yeah, I'm Deadpool, start, Deadpool is Beaver. Yeah, he's, he's, he's his starting three. Ryan, Ryan, yeah. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan all Canadians. Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds, Justin Bieber, and <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky, yeah, that's all right. He's a celebrity, right? That's a sick team right there. <laughs> Coach Tuck, you're yeah, crushing right. it so far. Yeah, for sure. All right, and then he's going to go to Canada to recruit any, anyone else. <laughs> yeah. Go to the Canadian Film Festival, see what you got. Hey, man, you look really good can in that Drake film. Can Drake skate? Drake's from Toronto. Can Drake skate? Um, I'm Can sure Bob probably be arranged. Uh, he's probably played a little bit. God, I would love to get a Drake Knights collab going here. You That'd know, be crazy. Yeah, not like, me. I can't sing or rap or anything. I'm get, get little John. Get little John to bring in in Drake <laughs> yeah. for the intro. <laughs> yeah. How's that? Are you guys? You got to ex- be excited about those things. Those small little Vegas elements, like the little John aspect. Yeah, is like one of the most fun. <laughs> little John's things. really cool. Oh my god, he's, he's a great the man. Guy. He's <laughs> awesome. He's the man. He's awesome. And it, like his intros for the Knights are incredible. <laughs> yeah, amazing. But there's like, there's some really like, I mean, everyone's like, oh, Vegas and stuff like that. But like, there's a lot of celebrities that like live in Vegas. For no, there's sure. tons. Yeah. There's like, like, I mean, people are like, oh, who's the most famous person you know? And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't really know. Like, I don't know. Cause like, like I've, um, like I have mutual friends with like Steve Aoki and stuff. So I met him uh, and stuff like that. Like, um, Alex from the Chainsmokers, 
Mm -hmm. uh, like, cause I met the chain smokers. I have like his number and stuff. So like whenever they're in town or go check them out. Have, yeah. I'll, like we, we had our end of the year party and stuff. I'm, like I went over and said hi to him and stuff, but like little John's like really nice. And like, yeah. but like then you got like carrot top and like Chris angel. Sure. Super sure. Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Angel is like, a, he has a huge following. Yeah. And so like, um, we connected on a level because my foundation deals with children's cancer, pediatric cancer. And his son had, uh, ha or is, I think he's in his second round of remission uh, with leukemia. So can you tell me more about your foundation? Yeah. Yeah. So it's the 89 foundation. So when you, Alex talked foundation, 89 sounds like 89, 89. Yeah. yeah I like yeah. that. Yeah. I didn't come up with that, but <laughs> no, I'm, not clever. <laughs> I'm not clever at all. I didn't come up with that. Someone else did. We have a logo. So we're still, just when we were starting to roll it out and became an official um, 501c3, COVID happened. We had a, a small golf tournament in Vegas last year. I did a three-on-three -three tournament four years ago with like the, in Syracuse, though. So it's based in Vegas and Syracuse, so I split it up. Um, our current kind of partnerships have been with Comprehensive Cancer Center. Uh, I did a, a two-year deal with them for commercials, and they donated my foundation. Um, Nevada Donor Network uh, did a three-year grant with, to my foundation, which is very nice of them, which then I ended up uh, doing my own three-year grant with Galisano's Children's Hospital in Syracuse, New York. Uh, they're doing a uh, special needs program on the, um, in their children's uh, hospital. Interesting. Is, yeah, so they did a whole build. So there's like, a, there's like an 89 room there. So it was really cool. So we did a grant with them. Um, just small little things like I haven't even introduced like when, when we're ready we're gonna like get more on the social media and just take donations like sure. little donations <laughs> if someone wants to do a donation like when I score a goal like they can donate a hundred bucks or right. we have some people that already do that like I just out of straight generosity like we have a website and stuff uh, that I mean I guess this is the first time we're really talking about it it's great uh, 89 foundation.org so that's uh, you can go on and it's just got a little snippet of things that we've done in the past and stuff, just little pictures and stuff. No, n nothing too big. It's not like we're into the galas and stuff like that quite yet. But I want to I want to do some stuff. I want to do some big things. I want to bring the Special Olympics to Vegas. That'd be amazing. Yo, that'd be so I want to awesome. wow. I want to bring the Special Olympics to Vegas. I I uh, recently had a meeting with someone who uh, just is a. Uh, poured a lot of money into their foundation and one of their pillars is special needs and so they're they're very interested in doing something and I don't know how that works with the actual Olympics and stuff like that if they just follow if they just follow the actual right. Olympics I know the Paralympics do I don't know about special Olympics I don't know if that's a different year same year so I'd have to look into that more but I think if there's a city to do it and that would raise the money for it absolutely. in a heartbeat, I this think is the it'd one. be Vegas. Absolutely. absolutely Vegas. I've noticed that people are so into giving back in Vegas. I yeah, mean, for sure. You look at, um, I went to the, uh, I think it's uh, Travis Roy Foundation uh, with the, um, who's the band? Um, wow, I am blanking. Uh, Big fan. And the Magic Dragons? Magic Dragons. Yeah, thank yeah, yeah. You. Thank you. Wow, great random guest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, guess. Come Quick, on. Drew. Oh, come on. Just Drew. Guess. Come on. You just came through right there. Right. It's, it's, it's a local yeah, band, I, I figured. Yeah. Band. Yeah. 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 Magic so, Dragons. Yeah, Magic Dragons. Um, uh, we, we did a gala for them. They raised millions of dollars. Yeah, they That's come out awesome. hard. They do an amazing event. By the way, local band. This local band, Magic Dragons. They're from Vegas. For sure as fuck wasn't Panic at the Disco. Yeah. They're good. They're amazing, man. They're good, too. Yeah. Yeah, I do like that. But Madden Dragon, it's like, it's awesome. We, we, is there a reason this hits home, close home, close to home for you? Uh, I I grew up and um, one of my favorite coaches growing up, actually in lacrosse, he was the uh, special ed teacher. And okay, we had a really close connection. So that's the first time I did anything special needs, and then I did uh, when I moved away from home in Michigan. They we they had an entire. Um, phys ed class that would have like six or seven um, um, high functioning like um, I don't say normal that's not the right word um, non-disabled students yeah. like myself and other 
cl uh, classmates and stuff, and you actually had to get recommended for this program. It's a public school, sure, but we right. had to get recommended, and I, I was lucky enough to get recommended by one of our one of my teachers, because uh, I always looked to give back, and I was a little ahead in some of my classes, and we would go in with special needs kids of all different disabilities, high functioning, low functioning, and we walk around with them to start, and then we play sports with them, and we'd be able to interact and talk with them, and just being able to see them come in and smile, and just be so happy every single day, no matter what. I mean, and realize how little they've been given. And like, because I've been given a lot. I've been given an athletic ability. I've been given um, and like all these things. And like my dad could afford hockey and like all of this that I've been given. And I'm just like, these kids are so happy. Yeah. yeah. Like how they just made me feel by coming in and smiling. Like if I can do anything to make them happy, that'll make my day. It's super right. cool. I mean, and I, that's something that I've always taken pride in and stuff. And I've done different things in Vegas, like Miracle League. I went out and pitched for them. Like, that was really cool. And, and just, like, they were so excited to see me. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. I'm excited to come out and pitch for you yeah. guys. Yeah. But, um, and then Children's Cancer, I mean, that's something that's, that's, I don't know, it's unspeakable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen it. And it's just like, what my foundation does is they raise money for programs that do a really good job but are underfunded. Okay. Just but need also help growing. That and to also just give experiences to these kids. Like if I have to go in or, or get my teammates to go in or like the Vegas Golden Knights do a really good job of getting us in the, into the community. They so do. like that's yeah. what I did with Miracle League. And what I did was my foundation wasn't um, like official or anything yet, but we already had the logo. So we got shirts. And I actually bought, uh, it was 10 games worth of 20 tickets a game. Um, and I gave it to five special needs programs and five uh, pediatric cancer programs, actually four, and then one was cystic fibrosis, which goes hand in hand. Sure. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. mostly kids with cystic fibrosis. So it was 10 games and they came and uh, it was 20. So it was usually like 10 and then you come with a parent, like 10 kids and then the parents would come or like, or like 12 kids and you have like uh, chaperones and stuff like that and they all got shirts and they all, and then we did a meet and greet after the game we took a picture and that's on my that's on the uh, foundation's website you can see those pictures and that was unbelievable that's awesome just to give them that experience because a, a lot of these kids don't have the resources that I had growing up sure I had a speech impediment when I was younger I went to speech therapy for a couple of years but like my parents had to pay for it a lot of these kids don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, high functioning, low functioning. I mean, the amount of medical bills that go into special needs, and then the amount of medical bills that go into children's cancer. Like parents have to like move cities. They have to leave their jobs. Absolutely. They have to like go into huge amounts of debt, and just to help in any way possible. Which they will, right? That's the parent thing to do, right? You break everything well, down. They'll just help. To, yeah. But I'm saying, yeah. me and my foundation and all these programs that are continuously underfunded. We just need to continue to make it more affordable for them. Right. Yeah. But it's, I mean, you can go into so much detail about like their lives and how much they have to sacrifice and how little they're given and how much of an issue sometimes it is because they can be given more opportunities and I mean, it, it's just really tough. For sure. Drew and I are both parents. So like even thinking about it is in. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. do whatever you need to do. Yeah. You have whatever, whatever it takes. New dad's new dad gang over here, you know. Yeah, for sure. I, I tell you, by the way, incredible foundation. That's awesome, man. Still growing. It's very, congrats, very yeah, congrats. congrats. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. for sure. Yeah. A lot. This is, I mean, it's a big deal. I mean, I think of the community aspect of you guys, like you had said, how the nights are so good, but you guys, you and specifically. And the nights helped me with those tickets and stuff. They yeah. gave us a good deal. To like, so that was. That for was the great fun. cause, right? It was. It's no. always yeah. yeah. So what else do you have going on outside? What's the business like, <laughs> of? Your world, like being a professional athlete, what's the business side like for you? Well, I have a financial advisor, so everything goes through him, first yeah. and foremost. <laughs> yeah. I'm, doing these, I'm not, it's different because different, I mean, different sports people are like, oh yeah, this guy has no money left and stuff like that. I think hockey is really good about having financial advice for the most part. Yeah. Not everybody. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not ev no, seriously, not everybody, yeah. but like, um, and we make enough money where like, I don't, I want, I don't want to have to work when I'm done. Like, sure. Yeah, I do this and like, it's also hard to get a job. I don't have a degree. Yeah. It's hard to get a job after <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Still working. But 
Uh, there was opportunities. Yeah. There was opportunities. I am fortunate enough to be a partner in, um, in a restaurant called uh, Players Locker by Wolfgang Puck. Yeah. Summerlin, so, awesome. Some, downtown Summerlin. So it's, um, it's a really good restaurant. It's got it's a re- it's a re- it's sports restaurant and lounge. Yeah. So we wanted to do a, we wanted to get away from the sports bar because that's a, a little bit we wanted to go a little bit more formal. Sure. So we Wolfgang Puck's got great chefs and I know that they can handle the food. And they do really good food and stuff. But we also brought that sports aspect to it. So there's a massive TV. There's TVs everywhere. They can go watch Knights games and uh, now Raiders games, yeah. which is awesome. COVID hit a month after we opened. I remember that. I was at the opening. It was so, so good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We got a little Ambrose in there. Yeah. Yeah. We got fired in there. It was fun. Uh, So um, it's it's a really cool concept. We wanted to get the community involved. Um, One of my main ideas was uh, the liquor lockers, which you've seen. Yeah. So players locker, the locker part about the players part about it's a sports part. The locker part about it is this membership program that we do. Um, with this giant liquor locker wall. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's like 120 lock or 80 lockers, massive wall of lockers. Right when you walk in, you see the backside of it and it's in this U. So you're able to go in and take a picture. So like for certain events, like we can put the company's logo right in the middle of it. But it's got a lot of celebrities that have lockers and stuff. We've gifted some, some have bought like Dana White, Dana White bought a locker. Uh, like. Shaquille O'Neal's agent bought a locker for him, so Sha- Shaq's got a locker. Gretzky's agent went in on a locker with him. Like we have myself, Will Carlson, Riley Smith, Shea Theodore, Derek Anglin yeah. are all a part of it. Um, we gifted Bill Foley a locker and stuff that's like fair. that. We that's got, we that's fair. That's, that's fair. That's fair. That's super. We got to get Mark Davis in there. But, uh, let's go. Let's need go, to. Mark. Come I on. just met Mark at the Aces game last week. Very, really nice. Great guy. Loves getting involved in the community. I saw him at a charity event two nights ago. So that was uh, CIS, so Communities and Schools. So he supported that. He had a very generous gift package of the Raiders tickets for he's, tonight. He's, he's all in on Vegas. Awesome. Yeah, he's all in on I mean, Vegas. There's like, I mean, Daniel Negreanu has got a locker. Shane Victorino's got yeah. a locker. Sick. I mean, there's some like, yeah. yeah, Shane's a great guy too. He's I mean, he's sure. a legend. Flying Hawaiian. Yeah. And that's where you can just store your personal like you, high end booze well, or whatever you else. To, you have to, yeah, but you have to like, so we you get discounted high end booze yeah. uh, from us, and you have to like purchase it. Uh, through the restaurant, but you get a food and beverage credit and stuff. So it's it's cool. really cool. It's just a part of being involved and like you can have residency it. podcast locker might be coming. You never know. There's a there's never, another, yeah. yeah yeah. So I mean, there's um that's one thing that I have going on. It's cool. Um, so that was started. So we're looking at maybe doing um I mean, we don't know if it's a players locker, but there's there's something in the works. So. I'll keep everyone informed as it as it rolls out, but there's we have some good opportunities at some other restaurants. We're always you always want to be very tentative, especially with COVID. That was crazy. We're actually in the green at Players Locker, which is awesome. Which we're very lucky though. Not many people can say they are right yeah, now, survived. especially in the past year and a half. Sure, survived, sure. let yeah. alone yeah. profited. And like we're about to pay back some of our investors, which is awesome. Yeah, but like it, it's a tough, tough market. How's it working with Wolfgang? Awesome. He's a great guy. I did a thing through Vegas, actually, where we went on the ice and we did like this promo video. <laughs> and we were shooting food at the net. It was hilarious. <laughs> oh, damn. So I'm German and Wolfgang's from Austria. So I, 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 I threw him out my couple sentences of German that I know, okay. <laughs> which I did take in college, but I forgot all of it. And he loved it. Oh, that's he amazing. Loved it. Just it, went nuts. We, we, I, yeah. So he's a really good guy. But um, Tom Kaplan and David Robbins, who work for Wolfgang, yeah. live in Vegas. They run Players Locker and Wolfgang's restaurants and stuff. I, I created a really good relationship with them, and that's how we went into this partnership with Wolfgang. Right. That's I mean, awesome. how do you partner with Wolfgang? Yeah, Your legend. first restaurant? Yeah, like, legend. Like, are you kidding me? Like, how do you <laughs> Quality say no? start. How Quality do you start. How no that? That's sick. But it was Is that always a dream, by the way? Do you always want to own your own spot, like a bar or restaurant? Not really, but it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So but it landed on his lap. Why yeah. not? Well, I mean, like, yeah. we just was like, I was looking at different investments and stuff like that, and I like to diversify my portfolio. I don't like just sticking with stocks and bonds because I let my financial advisor do that, and it's kind of boring. You want to do yeah. some fun stuff. I want to yeah. do something that's interesting. Yeah. 
that like, um, I don't know, it could be more long term and stuff, could have some cash flow and stuff like that. And it's a lot of fun. And you're able to interact with the community, though. You're able to hold community events. And I'm sure I'm going to have like maybe my f a, f a dinner for my foundation of and course, stuff like of that. Of course, of yeah. course. It, it's really cool. So we're going to continue to build like maybe stuff like that. I got a couple of partners that I work with in town that, um, uh, one of my main ones, Steve Kennedy, who runs Beer Park. Yeah, Steve Kennedy's great. Yeah. Steve, yeah. You know Steve. He's yeah. a great guy. And we have a really good relationship. So we're always throwing ideas past each other. And I so love it. Be, so you keep your eyes keep your eyes open. Awesome, so man. You never, you, eyes and forward. ears. You never man know. of many forward. talents over yeah. here. I don't know about that. <laughs> man, are you ever getting in the kitchen with, with Wolfgang over there? No, I was... Uh, I wish. It'd be Nate a great Smith piece of content. Yeah, yeah you have to. pizzas with him. Yeah. I just shot, I just shot eggs and burgers and apples <laughs> at, the at, at the net with him <laughs> on the ice. That's, that's you. Yeah. That's fine. That's right. No, that's okay. That's close cool. enough. Yeah. That's close enough. All right. At the end of every episode, we do this segment called Eat a Drink and Binge It, where we uh, recommend something or somewhere to eat. Like, you can pick some Vegas favorites that you like if you want, like, a, your favorite okay. restaurant in Vegas or something. Uh, drink it, same thing. It could be, like, a brand you really like. It could be a cocktail you love drinking, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then binge it is anything that you're consuming right now and obsessed with. Book, podcast, TV show, Movie, anything. Whatever, so we'll, go, yeah. we'll, we'll loop you around so you're last so you can get some, get some time oh. for some good ones. Right, you know well, I already have mine. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. You want to start? What do you got? Ambrose, what you eat? Banana whiskey. Yeah. yeah, there you go. There yeah, it is. Wow, there it is. Plug. Plug if I got the you. Plug for there sure. we go. There we go. Well, yeah, uh, I just put my bar. You're up there. Ambrose is yeah. up there. We're oh, going. Yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead, Jeff. My eat it is. I, look, I had a very long weekend, so I'm going home. I'm going. Jeff's full, hungover right now. Full, Jeff is full definitely hungover. Food. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to Slater's after this. I've said it before, but if you've never gone to Slater's in Las Vegas, it's incredible. I think the best burgers, fried pickles, Slater's 50-50. It's fire, yeah. So fire. You're going mad greasy to get that I hangover? I full hangover <laughs> food today, so I don't care. And then the Raiders game. Dial it in. What do you got? I have a, it's a snack. I was at the cabin over the weekend in Utah, and my uncle brought Dots pretzels. Have you ever had Dots, Dots pretzels? Dots was like chocolate pretzels or something? Nah, D O T S pretzels. It's a brand of pretzels, I think, from I think the, maybe the it. Midwest. Fucking phenomenal. Okay. This flavor was Southwest. Unreal. Nice. I snacked on them for like a quick 20 minutes. The entire bag was just demolished. That's like right. one of those, like, you eat one by one, and then you're like, damn, I just ate thousand pretzel calories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so sure. Dots pretzels. Yeah, I think there's a ton of different flavors, I'm assuming, but I had the Southwest flavor. Not bad. Recommend it. Nice, nice. Um, so over by my house is a little like hole in the wall spot called Spaghetti Western. Fire. Um, yeah, it's fire. fire. Man. So I had the chicken parm. I love Spaghetti Western. Yeah, Spaghetti Western was money, and uh, had the calamari. They have like the shrimp and the the squid squid in there. So yeah, Spaghetti Western uh, in Southern Highlands. It's fire. I love that. All right, recommendation. What do you got for well, the people? I already talked about players' locker and stuff, but other mama. Yeah. Fire. That was great. Dude. Absolutely oh. delicious. The deviled eggs at other mama though. Okay. I'm know. telling you right now, I, I love double legs. And I know it's, it's uh, acquired. I, it's quite, I love them too. Okay. Nothing beats other mama's deviled eggs. Damn, now I got to try Oh, them. my God. I don't think I've ever had them there. You got to get the deviled eggs and the sticky rice. And I'm telling you, I don't even what know if you combo. want anything. <laughs> what a combo. Thing. Oh, oh, well, you want to get real crazy, go for the oysters, too. That's my shit. Oh, yeah. Oysters at other mama or yeah. I don't godly? Know. I, there was, um, oh, I can't remember where they were from. There was some, they had, it was uh, just for like that week and they were delicious yeah. oysters. I went a couple weeks ago. That's a solid spot. Great choice. At Other Mama, on their oysters, they put like some kind of sauce on them, right? It's not just like oyster shuck. Yeah, they no, put fire. some shit on them. It's fucking delicious. Great choice. Thank Great you. choice. Love that one. Uh, my drink it, I was drinking it all weekend. I don't know. I think you did this a couple other weeks ago, but I finally had that Primavera Don Julio. Oh, I haven't had it yet. It's like the orange cast. Yeah, it's actually really good. 1942. Yeah. yeah. It's not, I, I prefer like, 42 if I had the choice of one or the other but the yeah. primavera is really good okay uh, and you're right it has that like orange like a sweeter taste yeah but it's a great tequila okay, go good. check it out yeah. I haven't had it yet but I want to try it since sure. 42 is like sold out everywhere pretty much it right is. now for sure you go get the Don Julio primavera yeah. but it's fire yeah yeah they age it in orange wine casks yeah. yeah but orange wine has no actual orange in it it was like a weird thing at least with the rabbit hole I fell down on TikTok I was like <laughs> yeah. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about but it sounds great <laughs> sold me All right, yeah what sold me what are you drinking uh, Wilson Creek they're known for like the almond champagne that they have that all the girls almond love. Champagne? It's phenomenal. But no, they have a sangria, a sparkling sangria that is absolutely phenomenal. Is it white or red? It's red. They, red? I think okay. they have a, a like white red. too, but Probably. Wilson Creek, they're known for like the almond champagne. Yeah, they have a coconut mean. champagne. Yeah. But the sangria, <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what do you I'm got? On, I'm on the tequila tip too. Have you guys ever had Tears of Lorona? No, but it sounds official. So it comes in like this really cool, like 
Sounds jar majestic. thing. It is. <laughs> sounds it's, majestic. It's at the price point of like 1942 and like classic. It sounds like some cartel tequila. Tears it's of Lorona sounds no, like. For sure. And it comes in like this like hood like bottle, but it's fire. Super, super aged. Boy, extra is it the black? Is it black bottle? No. No, it's, it's a, it looks like, honestly, it looks like a mason jar with like the flip top that has like wax no on it. It's way. like OG. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's sick, but it was actually really good. Super smooth, extra like cooked, it felt like. It was now cool. it sounds Lowe's like you're making it in your basement. Tip, dude. No. All right, what do you got? So, well, my favorite drinks in Manhattan. Boom. Okay. So I do with Crown Royal and stuff. And okay. But right now, the finished long drink. They're good. It's oh, like a gin. It's like a gin that? canned it's cocktail. A gin based drink. It's like you can get. There's like four different kinds right now that I know of. There's just like regular. Uh, it's a grapefruit. Sorry, gin and grapefruit based drink. It's in I a can. That. They're actually, which is crazy. They're actually canned in Utica, New York. Oh really? Oh, right, wow. near, right near where I'm from, which is wild. But I've only seen them in Vegas and in Syracuse, and like nowhere <laughs> else. Two places, yeah. Yeah. Two places. They're not a growing. Uh, Miles, Miles Teller and Kygo are both investors. So you can just what in, slam them. They're like they're yeah. unbelievable. And um, so it's like, isn't it like the Finnish? Free. It's like the Finnish drink, like drink in Finland yeah, or something. I, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess it's like a long drink. Eric Hollow, who's Finnish, showed me them. Yeah. Which is wild, but they have like cranberry. They have a black one, which is higher alcohol content. Gotta have that. And they have the blue one, which is just like a little bit of sugar. And then Gotta they have the white it. one, which I like, which is sugar free. Because any sugar, I just get hung up. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. But Damn. I like, that's a good one. I, I really like long drinks. And these are canned? Yeah, they're canned. Just slamming just, them. No, it's just in a can. It's, yeah. You buy it, like, they come in like little six packs. So I'm always <laughs> walking out with like 10 six packs to fill up my fridge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just built the bar, by the way. So uh, I, gotta, I gotta throw I got uh, I'm actually gonna. Oh, I, I At your house? The, I know the business. Yeah. So in my house, I had a room that my previous owner had a family room there. And I did a, uh, a bar. I'll show you guys afterwards. Yeah. Um, it was like a kind of like a speakeasy. So two, in the crib. two companies worked on this. Uh, Reclaim Secrets did the countertop. Um, it's Reclaim Slabs of Trees. So we did a oh. black walnut. When I say... I, they had to have six guys like wheel this thing in, and then eight guys had to carry it, like maneuver it to Through put the it. Oh, it's like one cabinet. huge piece, and they waterfalled it. The end of it. Oh, it's unbelievable. And they did the back part of it too. And when I say this could not have fit any more perfect, it was. It, it, I'll show you guys pictures. Are we getting, are we getting the, the invite to break this bar in or what? Let's <laughs> yeah. go. No, I still need my bar stools. I still need my bar yeah. stools. Right. He but, said, screw um, the family room. We're putting a bar yeah, in, boys. Yeah, yeah, I love I have it. one room that's like, well, I have my office, but like, I was like, I want this room. And I want, like, you can, because I went to Kylie and I was like, you can decorate every other room. Can I have this room? She goes, okay. She yeah. said, what are you going to put? I go, a bar. She goes, yeah, okay. Typical. <laughs> yeah, so then, so that was Reclaim Secrets. You'll see an Instagram post coming out soon uh, once everything's finished. And then um, Accolade Woodwork is, they're actually right next to each other. So Reclaim Secrets is Andrew Moore. Accolade uh, Woodwork is my boy Tony. He did all the cabinetry. And he actually was able to like curve the cabinets so like it went with the, with the wood bar top. And then he also did the floating shelves on either side of the TV. Um, put like a whole cabinet system around this giant mini fridge that I had. And then like did like it, it's crazy what he did. And then he put like lights so it lights up my bottles on the floating oh, shelves. Come on. And lights underneath the bar. So right where you're sitting, there's like lights. What and a vibe. It's like all LED like controlled over my phone. When I say these guys hooked it up, I mean these guys hooked it up. Love that. It's this awesome. is this is the only staple you need in a house, really. Yeah. A, give me a couch and a really nice bar. Everything else you can have, honey. After Amazing. hearing that, Jeff is ready to drink again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no me, more water. Give yeah, me no like a forty-eight water. hour like break, yeah. and I'll be back. Yeah. Um, all right, my binge it. Billions is back. Yeah. Best show. Never watched it. Oh I know. My I know. Seen a couple know. episodes. I haven't gotten into it yet. It's the best. It's okay. the best. Billions is back on Showtime. There's like five seasons. If you want, if you're just chilling and you need a little backlog. Okay. It's on Showtime. It's okay. incredible. Yeah. It's billions. Good. It's the best show. You have to watch it. Right. Stop watching the trash and watch Billions, please. Well, I mean, this, this this what I've been binging is not trash. But again, the only time I get to watch any TV is during free time. And my free time is also Carolyn's free time. Yeah. So I'm stuck watching whatever she wants to watch. So we just that. binge or are binging Clickbait. Was that one of your guys's? Awesome. No. Yeah, it wasn't. No, no, Clickbait. Yeah. Awesome. On uh, Netflix. Awesome. What is Pretty it? good with that, uh, Adrian Grenier. Adrian Grenier. Entourage. Adrian Grenier. Entourage. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is we're it a movie about, or? We're almost done. It's a, it's a series. Okay. No. Uh, but the twists and turns in that are absolutely crazy. 
I gotta watch it. I definitely I, recommend like, it. It's pretty good. Very it's not trash, it. what I'm usually into, but it's very good. Usually trash, like the F-Boy Island and shit. Oh, yeah, I love like Love Island, all, <laughs> yeah. all the trash shit. That's what my girlfriend wants. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I get it from Carolyn. It's like, yeah, again, yeah. my free time is not awful. my free time. Yeah. I can't binge Yellowstone. Well, Car- Carolyn's is a scapegoat, by the way. I'm starting to not sure. believe you it. Know, like, oh, hey, guys. The one Love Island guy just fought in the um, On the celebrity boxing thing, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. that's that's my girlfriend's favorite couple is, what's his name? The Tyson Fury's brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Tommy, yeah. Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury. Yeah, yeah, Tommy yeah. Fury. yeah. Uh, um, what do you got? My budget documentary, Shiny Flakes. Watch this on Netflix. Have you guys Shiny seen Shiny Flags? Flakes. Flakes. Kid in Cocaine Germany reference? or something at like 15 built an empire of basically the Amazon for drugs. Cocaine reference. Great. See, yes. I knew it. I saw a commercial about this or this, like a video a about this. It's a crazy story. He's in his freaking mom's basement in his room, built basically Amazon for drugs from like the backlog of the internet, Fi- makes billions the dark of web. What's it called? The dark What's web. it called? Shiny Flakes. So is it like it the was Silk Shiny Road Flakes. reference? Yeah, so no. He used to get his stuff from Silk Road, but he created a marketplace like Amazon called shinyflakes.com and was just selling drugs for like a couple years, made billions of dollars, and then finally got cracked on, and then they- uh, What's it on? Netflix? It's on Netflix. Okay. And he got charged as a minor. It was an untold story, right? It, yeah, was, it was one like, of those untold yeah. story ones. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, they have the the hockey one. Did you guys hear about? Oh the my god! One? Yeah, the, with the trash. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Dude, yeah. you have to watch yeah. it. I have. To. Seventeen I know, year old I know, dude. I know. Yeah. So it's like mob related. This mob guy. Uh, this kid. Uh, one of the big mob family's son, who's seventeen year old years old, like got hurt playing sports or something. His dad was like, "Ah, oh, here to like make up for. It. Here's a hockey team. Bought him like a." A hockey, a hockey team, and he's a 17 year old president of some hockey club. It was yeah. insane. It was the like trashers. minor, like it was a trash. It was like, and there's like guys that were like that ended up going to play like AHL, NHL from that team for too. sure. But it's like wild. They say it's like crazy. 17 year old kid. Could you yeah. imagine owning like your own team? No. Like not like a big big team, but like yeah, yeah he was the you're GM. the boss. Any the team GM, would be sick. Any team would be president. sick. But that's not my show because I haven't seen it yet. You have to watch it. It's incredible. All right, what do you got? What's your binge it? Ted Lasso. Ted, Ted Lasso. Lasso. Come on. It's probably like one of the like happy happiest sports oh. like shows. That is, and uh, what's Sudeikis is the best. It has a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah, that's right. How about his like Grammy video? Did you see that? That was the best thing ever. That couldn't have been any more perfect with Ted Lasso. I think he's like Jason Sudeikis is the man. Anyways, like he's great. The, yeah. I didn't even know that. I didn't like. I I always really liked him. But then Ted Lasso took it over the top. Yeah. Like, he, it does. It, like, I'm, Kylie won't watch it. And she'll, I was like, I'm already on season two. <laughs> so upset. I'm like, no, because then my, all my teammates are like, oh, my God, we talk about Ted Lasso all the time. So yeah. she feels left out now. And she's like, okay, I'm watching it now. There you go. There you go. You got to bring her in. Bring her in. <laughs> yeah. My man, thank you for coming on the show. This was awesome. Guys, can't wait for him to watch the season. Go to Players Locker. Yes, sir. Go check out his foundation. As always, we appreciate you at the Residency Pod. We'll see you next week. Yes, sir. Later.